My name is Stefan Kessler and I'm going to talk in the next roughly 45 minutes uh, about SAP HANA Vora, our solution for combining enterprise and Hadoop data for in-memory processing. I'm also happy to introduce you to Oscar Puertas. Um, he's a Strazi software engineer and, well, me as a developer for SAP and he is a software engineer for Strazio. We together worked on that solution on a code basis and, well, <laughs> worked tightly together the last couple of weeks and months. And I'm very happy to welcome him later on stage to give a live demo about our software. So first of all, what is SAP? So in a nutshell, we're producing enterprise software for all the needs you might want to have in an enterprise. And we are very happy to have a large amount of customers that do their businesses together with us. So maybe you fly to Madrid, as I did. So you might get into a plane which is run by one of our customers because we've, our customers fly 1.7 billion of the world's passengers. If you do like chocolate, I do uh, actually, and if you eat a piece of chocolate, it could most likely be that one of our customers was involved in producing it and selling it on the market. So we are very happy, first of all, to support all those customers with different kinds of software ranging from solution for HR, for sales, for all the processes you have in your company. But this also means that um, you have, well, we, have, we have a lot, kind of, we have our hands on a lot of data. And our customers demand that we use this data for their business decisions, for what's next, what to sell next, what to decide in the end. And this becomes even more complex if you take the IoT world into account. So just some rough facts, 2.5 billion people are connected on social networks by the end of 2020. That's at least estimated. Uh, you've got tons of devices. You've got tons of trades and sensors on, for example, on your ships and your cargoes. So that means, like, beside the enterprise data you already have in your company, there will be, in addition, tons of other sensor data, tons of other data produced by your customers or by your goods traveling around the globe. And of course, you want to use that data in combination with your enterprise data you already have uh, to get better insights on what your customers are doing, get, a, get better insights of what your goods are doing, and kind of what actually drives your success of your company. So, with all that data we have, we should be sailing smoothly, right? But unfortunately, we're actually drowning in our own data. So there's this, this famous saying called, we're starving in information, but drowning in data. That's actually the reality now for our customers, and that's reality in enterprises. And we identified three points, three things that might hinder your enterprise of using all the data that is out there. So first of all, it's still very inefficient to, uh, to process large amounts of data. Imagine not only your enterprise data, but imagine also big data on your Hadoop uh, data lakes, which could be petabytes or even more. We all heard a talk of uh, Paco this morning um, about the amount of, of data that's, that's in enterprise. That's huge. That's incredible, huge. And second, even though we, we could process those data, it's still lacking a bit of business alignment. That means you have a Hadoop data lake and you have like, your enterprise system separated. But actually, you need to mix it. You need to have data from the enterprise system as well as your Hadoop data lake to do, uh, to do good decisions, to, to know what's happening in there. And last but not least, it's still costly to manage uh, that big data solutions um, because you need to have kind of different security features on both sides, enterprises versus Hadoop, and, well, you also need hardware and all the other parts. So should I move there because of the sound? Sorry. <laughs> All right. Good. Thank you. All right. So inefficient data processing, lack of business alignment, and uh, costly managing of big data are the three reasons we identified for um, for hindering enterprises of enter entering the Hadoop space on combining enterprise and Hadoop data as well. So I give you an example, which is well pretty easy to understand. So modern airplanes, maybe a one that brought you to Madrid, um, has 40,000 sensors, and each one is reporting every second. So it's very easy to understand that a plane should, in the end, stay up in the air. So one of those famous things we want to do with big data is predictive maintenance. So kind of foresee when some parts of it 
actually break. Because if you could foresee it, you could change it uh, well, when necessary and keeping up in the air time as high as possible. So it can save costs by a lot, obviously. And what do you require? Well, you have to put the sensors data you gather from your plane, which is actually huge, 40,000 sensors each second, long flights, into, for example, your Hadoop data lake, data lake. But it's not enough. What you also need is connected to your enterprise system. Because in your enterprise system, you have the bill of materials of the plane. You know how to order something there. You know what the cost is. You have your schedules of the plane there. And you can actually decide whether it's now a good, uh, a good point in time to change parts or not to. Or maybe canceling one flight and leaving the other up in the air. Stuff like that. Now this is a scenario we face day by day. And kind of that's why we made SAP HANA Bora. We launched it in September 2015. And it's, in a nutshell, a massively distributed in-memory computing system that uh, should scale up to 1,000 of nodes on-premise in the cloud for big data processing for your business. And we're very happy that we, uh, we finally finished the product and brought it to the market now. Um, and the press is happy as well. So I brought you one quote, which I'm a bit, a bit proud of. Um, so Constellation Research quoted that, in my view, the war announcement, and with that, the certainty that SAP will build commercial software, both from a technology and the application perspective, utilizing Hadoop, is a very important landmark in SAP's history. And that's what my talk is going to be about, SAP HANA Bora. So I'm going to go, first of all, in the SAP Hadoop journey. So SAP, Hadoop, uh, SAP HANA Borrow is not the first product we do together with Hadoop. And after the journey, I'm going to bring you into the vision and the use cases of HANA Bora in more details, as I did now in the introduction. Followed by some technical details, this gets really deep into what is happening inside SAP HANA Bora and a roadmap what we are planning for our future offering there. Last but not least, an open source proposal, and then which are very much looking forward to a demo with Oscar Poetas. So when you think about HANA, oh, sorry, when you think, think about SAP and data processing, you might think about SAP HANA. So SAP HANA basically um, is kind of the, the sister product of SAP HANA Bora, and it enables real-time computing for OLTP and all other use cases, kind of both. So what it does technically, it puts all data in memory, it's very, very highly optimized. So I spoke to developers a few days ago, um, and they even develop, uh, even um, optimize on cache level of processors. So this is very highly optimized, and that's the reason why they get that fast performance. And of course, because our customers not only need database, a database system, they also need applications around. Um, we developed a couple of applications around uh, for OLAP processing, for getting the information out of the data inside the database. And obviously, we did optimizations as well that you can, can uh, um, kind of add your, um, add your applications fast and get information fast out of that one. So that's HANA in a nutshell. Um, and that's the one thing. But if you look at both things, SAP HANA in memory processing and Hadoop, they are actually at least to, to a certain uh, fraction pretty similar. So you actually have data in, you want to take the data and process it, crunch it, make your analysis on it, and then finally get the information out. So what's the difference? So the difference is that for SAP HANA Bora, we made great efforts in optimizing it to the very limit. So at least the idea and uh, what, what we are striving for is having results in 0.0 seconds very fast, instantly won. And that's why we use highly optimized systems, as I said, and we need to have the right hardware for it. So. Uh, there's obviously large costs in getting those hardware ready, and it's kind of combined with the SAP HANA system to provide that performance. On the other hand, on the right-hand side, basically we have Hadoop. So it's very easy to scale it up to infinite storage for raw data. It's kind of a scale-out solution. We have HDFS, and if you run out of space, you just add another node, or 10 other nodes. And it runs a commodity hardware, so you don't need anything special. You just take whatever you have, put it to your cluster, and you can work with it. So what we have as a vision, also a long time ago, was combining both approaches, right? So in an enterprise, we might find SAP HANA for enterprise system, and we might find Hadoop as a data lake in the end. 
That's what, what we're heading for. And we made our way and started, started accessing Hadoop from SAP HANA. So this is a short, well, a number of, of milestones we had there. So the first work with Hive, we used it as a remote cache and later on. We started reading data from HDFS. We started doing the produce jobs in HANA and running them on Hadoop. And we, in the end, we even used Spark SQL as a source. So we kind of grow with the, with the own system. But what is still missing? Still missing is that the interaction is rather unidirectional. So what happens is you start your query in SAP HANA and then kind of ask Hadoop for getting some data, for processing a bit of it. Hadoop itself doesn't access data from HANA at all. It just kind of serves as a, uh, as a processing engine in the end. So we're rather using Hadoop uh, and not embracing it, not working inside that world. So we're rather accessing data, and for that reason, we might um, make only limited use of the computing capabilities out there. Because even if you have commodity hardware, you still have a large number of processors, you still have a lot of computing power there, and a large number, or a large amount of memory as well. So that's basically the reason why we went for SAP HANA Vora. So what's the vision and the use case? So from a top level point of view, from a 20,000 feet above point of view, we want to bridge the gap between HANA, the enterprise system, and the Hadoop world. It should help you to more, make more precise decisions, as we say, but what does that mean? You, that your SAP HANA system, as already shown a bit, can take Hadoop data into account, like your regular, um, uh, inf uh, inf regular information you get out of SAP HANA, you can combine it with Hadoop data to make even more precise decisions there. And second, democratized data access, what we call, what does it mean? It does basically mean that you can also access enterprise data, enterprise data from your Hadoop data lake. That means like everybody has access to it that actually needs it. And last but not least, combining both systems in a very uh, kind of strict, or let's say very integrated manner, leads to a simplification of your big data ownership. So that means you rather look at that as one system instead of having multiple ones that you need to mix in the end. So as I already said, it's an in-memory execution engine. We plug it into Apache Spark as an execution framework and try to enrich interactive analytics on Hadoop. Interactive analytics, obviously, because we want to get information out of that data. So coming from the features, what we provide here is, first of all, even on Hadoop, we create an engine that does in-memory computing for high performance. We are going for fast OLA processing as well and want to connect enterprise systems and Hadoop data lakes. And what's really important here is that we want to deeply integrate into existing Hadoop systems because we see there are a lot of data out there already on data lakes and we want to support our customers getting that data for their business integrated with HANA. So what does, what does it mean to enable your company to make precise decisions? So say your starting point will be SAP HANA, like on the left-hand side on the slide here. So you, well, you already can kind of, kind of have some analytics there, they have some business warehouse things, standard all-up queries on top of it, but in combination with HANA Vora, you can access your data lake as well. And what does HANA Vora do to support that kind of scenario? So first of all, uh, we have the in-memory execution engine Vora plugged in there. I'm gonna go uh, and explain it in more details in the next part of the talk. But we have that one to increase computing speed in the end. But that's not the only thing. In addition to that, we offer also all our functionality on Hadoop in order to be able to get more queries from SAP HANA to the Hadoop world. That means like we use more of the processing power we have out there. But that's kind of the first scenario that enables SAP HANA to use Hadoop data lakes in a more integrated manner. Next thing would be democratizing data access. So we heard a lot about, uh, about data science today already. Um, so usually, you, as a data scientist, you sit, I say, at least in that example, on top of a Hadoop data lake, you got your Scala, you got your R, you got your Python, your notebook, whatever you have, and you use the data in there to make your decisions, to get information out of here, to see what's actually happening inside the data. But as you have seen, for example, in the airplane, airplane uh, I explained to you uh, in the beginning, you actually need some business data to um, kind of enrich the data you have on your data lake, for example, sensors data. I'm gonna show you a more deeper example uh, later on. But what we did, 
Um, it's not only adding OLAP functionality there, again, adding processing speed for data scientists there, but we also added access to HANA, which seamlessly integrates um, the data there into your Hadoop processing. So you can just mix it in as it would be another table or any other abstraction on Hadoop or on Spark in that case. So coming now for a larger real world use case and example. So say you have a large gas turbine. So that's what you're constructing. You have it in your hall and you're working with it. So obviously it consists of several parts. So you have a cooler, you have some catalysts, you have a rotor, or multiples of them. You have some nozzles. I'm not an expert here, but just as an idea, you have a lot of parts that you have to put into that one. And since we are in the kind of the age of IoT, each component is equipped with a sensor and measures whatever happens there. But those sensors actually have a hierarchy, which is kind of an important concept in all our processing. Uh, but coming back to the, coming back to the hierarchy, um, say the turbine has several components, the cooler, rotor, nozzles, and so on and so forth. And each sensor is kind of mapped to one of those components. So what do we do now? The sensors stream data continuously every second, even longer, to a data lake. Um, and let's just assume your, your, your system Hadoop discovers Oh, uh, one of those sensors reports a very high temperature. So this looks like this part, let's say the pump, is going to fail. But what could it be? First of all, it could be that a sensor is broken or the part actually is broken. So um, what would, be, would make your life, let's say, easier in that sense, if both sensors report a very high temperature, then you're very sure that the pump itself is broken. But those both sensors have to be on the same hierarchical level that would mean that you need to know and need to have information for processing on that hierarchy um, in your Hadoop data lake. But that hierarchy, you're usually storing in HANA because you have a bill of materials there, the board, all the parts, you constructed it, um, and you have the information in there. So in order to judge if it's a, if it's a part that is broken or if it's a sensor that is broken and uh, providing with wrong values, you need to have access to your ERP system. And kind of that's where SAP HANA Warrod jumps in. So you're able to get the parts, uh, the data of the, of the hierarchy of the parts out of SAP HANA. You're able to get the data of the turbine streamed into your Hadoop system and you are able to decide what is broken, part or sensor, and what to do next. Kind of this is a very easy explanation of what you could do basically for predictive maintenance. But what is the role of HANA Warrod there? First of all, we need OLAP capabilities. We need an easy way of querying the hierarchies there. So hierarchy processing um, is with standard SQL very complicated, so we need that optimized OLAP queries to make it easy for the, for the customer, for the data scientist, for the user, whoever you imagine. We need to bridge the gap between cluster and enterprise systems to get the bill of materials of that turbine. And last but not least, sure, we need performance, because like imagine three weeks uh, after you re receive the data, you know, okay, parts of the turbine are broken. This is actually too late. You want to have it fast, as fast as possible, um, depending on how long the pump will stay like online in that case. But that's the role of SAP HANA Bora, is providing all up capabilities, it bridges the gap, and last but not least, we try to increase performance, especially in all up situations. So, going to the details, what we have built there. So, First of all, as I already said, we plug the engine into, into Spark. And in addition to that, we are Hadoop agnostic. So I tried to illustrate that by putting uh, major Hadoop distributions on there. So what we say, we plug into Spark, a common framework that's available out there and that might have our customers already installed. And we say we are Hadoop agnostic, that means whatever Hadoop system you have, we're gonna bring you our engine, we bring our extensions there, and you can use them. And for sure, you can have an SAP HANA system uh, for your enterprise data and you can access data there, but it's not necessary. So it's not necessary for running HANA Bora on Hadoop that you have HANA, but you can access data from it. So in more details, for the first release, for 1.0 release basically, we support different file formats common in Hadoop. Okay, OSC, OSC is really the very easy, the easiest one. So we also support all our functionality and we take the hierarchy processing as I explained to you in the use case before as a first, um, uh, first thing we support on Hadoop. And for performance, we use the power of the, of the Wara engine with query compilation 
uh, to give you fast results. And uh, they already told you about the connectivity to the enterprise system. But one very important remark is that um, we keep our interface because we integrate in Spark. We keep our interfaces straight to Spark. That means you can extend it easily. It will become open source. And um, it integrates into the world. You can access, take every system uh, or every, every library you have in addition to Spark. And it will stay interface compatible in the end. So we basically provide two components for our customers. First of all would be the Spark integration. That's the yellow part on the right hand side of the slide. And second would be Vora Engine. So um, what we did, we did for example the hierarchy implementation with both sides because then we can switch between both engines with whichever is faster in the end. And um, we integrate that as an RDD for those who know Spark. It's basically the interface concept of Spark that we can plug in there and whatever library or system you already have on top of Spark, you can use HANA Vora in addition to that what you're doing. Few words for the SQL engine. What we do technically is we are taking the query you have there, compile it um, with LFOM into machine code. Well, that means we don't inter interpret it, we rather uh, compile it, and that's why we are getting very fast because we have an in memory columnar representation of the data, as already known, for example, from HANA, and we have experience in that. So, kind of the Vora engine is an in memory uh, data ma management layer that plugs into Spark. And we interact between Spark and Vora Engine seamlessly. And we are compatible to Spark libraries. So how does it work? Quick example. So we want to have the error wedge of the sensor values uh, from, let's say, certain sensor data, for example, stream from the turbine or from the airplane. And now Spark starts orchestrating the query over all the engines we have in the cluster. So we have one engine on every physical node. And say, parts of the query will arrive at that node I illustrated here. So we know a partition of the data, and we bring it up to the engine, load it there, be ready for fast processing, execute parts of the query here, and return results on, Spark level, on the Spark level. So we can continue processing with machine learning with whatever you can imagine there, or just outputting it to the user. So um, that's for the technical details here. Um, we will have another talk at Big Data Spain about hierarchies. Santiago Mola is, 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 is doing that it's tomorrow. Um, and you get more technical details about hierarchy processing. Here's the example of how we incorporate the engine itself. Coming to the roadmap, what do we have planned? So today we are at the point that we are entering with Hanavara 1.0 into the market with an own standalone product in the Hadoop space. So you don't need HANA, you can, just can use Hanavara if you want to. We embrace the Hadoop ecosystem, improve performance, add all our functionality, and kind of seamlessly integrate into the interfaces we have out there, also incorporating HDFS and other systems you know. But what, where are we heading? This might be even more important. So today our goal is to deliver enterprise analytics um, and HANA Spark integration. And for the blend innovations, we basically go into the direction of deeper OLAP um, integration. So we have on our roadmap uh, doing a model up for Vora on top of uh, a Spark Vora uh, uh, as a web interface. So you can easily not only doing hierarchy queries, but you can also do cube modeling and kind of wrangle your data to get information out of it in a very easy way that's convenient for any user. We also go for more all-up features. Um, so we as SAP, since we have a lot of contact to our customers, um, we know that certain functions are very important for them, but they're very hard to maintain. So for example, we need currency conversion to, if it, if it comes to sales, for example. And we need unit of measurement conversions to have the right value at the right time. And um, we want to integrate that into, into the uh, uh, Hanavara system to have a support on the Hadoop world as well. And sure, we need to extend um, not to other storage systems, not only HFS, but for example, S3 is on the list. And coming to security issues, because you want to have a simplified security system for all uh, your systems in your company, uh, we are going to have a look at that too. And the future direction is basically going beyond all up. So what I showed you, for example, is um, that we process relational data more or less, time series data at least in a certain amount, but we want to have specific instances for it, doing it even faster. And in addition to that, we might even uh, have known own distributed query engine uh, that works in that direction um, and kind of uh, works under the bottom together uh, to provide better results for Spark in the end. 
So that's what we have on the roadmap. That's where, where we are basically heading to. Coming to one point that is at least very important, as I think, and very important for me personally, uh, because we op op oftenly ask, so is it, is it true what you're saying here? And I would say, yes, it is. We do open source. So what we will do, we will put the complete Spark integration open source. The engine itself, itself will stay closed source, but the Spark integration will become completely open source. And it's more than a driver. It's a connection to database system possible, not only Vora, not only HANA, you can extend it very easily and can use their computing capabilities to, to get faster results. Oscar will show that in a second, what's actually possible there. So the integration with the Vora engine and HANA will become open source as well, but this is rather a driver, but the, the interfaces itself will become open source as well. And what's actually very important is the hierarchy processing in Spark will become open source together with the remaining package. So that would mean like you don't need any engine from SAP, you just can download it, use it, and use hierarchy processing on your Hadoop data lake without having any further system, HANA, HANA Vora engine, something like that. So what I want to state here is very important that we, our open source contribution is a self-contained software package. You really can use it, and if you want to have additional features, sure, you might have to go for HANA or the engine. But you want to add value to Apache Spark um, to, to, uh, to increase the functionality there, which might be necessary for your customers, but still will be open source. So now I'm very happy to welcome Oscar on stage. He's going to uh, present a live demo about the system we did. So let's welcome with a warm applause. Uh, what I would like to show you here is what we have achieved in the Sabhana project. Sabhana Bora project, I mean. Uh, I'm going to use the Zeppelin for the demo. I don't know if you know it. Uh, Zeppelin is a web cell used to execute Spark SQL queries. Uh, we have extended it to integrate with the SAP HANA Bora data source. First of all, the tables that I'm going to use for the use cases are those ones that you see up. Uh, salary is HANA, which is a table with some sport uh, player salaries information. Salaries, which is the same but in, in the Hadoop system. The third table is going to be sensor one underscore eight, which contains hierarchical data in order to build a hierarchy. Uh, and the last one is sensor one underscore rex, that contains some data from sensors. Okay. The, um, the first case that I would like uh, that I would like to talk about is pushing down more expressions to the, to the data sources. In our case, uh, Subhana Bora and Subhana. If you see here the query, can you see it? Yeah. Okay. Um, you see there is an average function uh, grouping by year and team, and you also see two UDFs, substream and cast. Uh, if we execute that query over the Subhana Bora data source, okay, thank you. Over the Subhana Bora data source, uh, the query that is going to be pushed down to the Bora engine is the one you have here. You see, it's a quite complex query, and what we are returning is 860 rows per node at maximum. Uh, that data is going to be combined in, uh, in the Spark level after that. On the other hand, if we execute the same query on a standard data source, what we are pushing down to the, to the data source is a full scan query, this one. That query will return almost 25,000 rows, which will be processed by Spark. So with our implementation, what we are getting is that we are reducing the network traffic uh, between the data sources and the workers, the Spark workers, and that also means that less data is going to be processed by Spark later on. The second case is about a join between two different data sources, SAP HANA 1 and the SAP HANA Bora 
the other side. Um, as I said before, we are going to use the salaries tables. The first one, this one, is stored in HDFS. You see here the data, and we have the second table. We contain exactly the same information, but it's stored in the SAP HANA database. When we execute this, what we are, what we are doing is uh, triggering a subquery against the first data source and another one against the second one. Uh, getting back the results and uh, joining them in, in the SPAR level. This is the query that we execute. You can see here that the join is performed by player and year. So people who is already using Subhana is going to be able to combine it with the new features of Subhana Bora, which is awesome. The last case that I would like to show you is using the concept of hierarchies. Um, we have had that hierarchy feature to the, to the Spark. Um, we can build a hierarchy from a table and query on it. For our example, what we are using is the sensor underscore eight table. We have it here. I show you a graphic with the hierarchy. And we also have the data table that is going to be joined with that hierarchy. Oops. With that hierarchy. Um, OK. Executing this query, what we are getting is the maximum values for the nodes uh, included in the third level of the hierarchy. If you see here the function level, uh, that's what is filtering that, that query. Uh, so, uh, Subhana Bora is the first Hadoop, uh, SQL on Hadoop solution supporting this kind of hierarchies. Uh, if you want to get further information about it, I will invite you to assist to Santiago Mola's talk tomorrow about it. And now I would like to, to invite back Stefan to the, to the stage. So, so actually, it's a live demo. So, should we try to execute something? This is a system running in Waldorf. This is where SAP is. Okay. Um, and uh, it's very brave to do a live demo because sometimes it fails. <laughs> you know about that? Are you sure? Yes. Just try it. Okay. Does it work? Yes, working. Yeah. All right. So we might change now levels. Just an idea um, to level two, maybe. You yeah. see that is really live. So. Yes. With no results. <laughs> ah, because I cannot show it. Yeah. Anyways. OK, but what you actually still see, even though there are no results, um, it was a bit improvised by me, but still very brave from Oscar to do a live demo here. Um, and so we're very happy to have that system and very happy to have that functionality here. And that's all it is. So thanks, Oscar. Thank you very much. So kind of. Concluding my talk, concluding our talk, SAP HANA Boro is a uh, massively distributed in-memory computing system that scales up to thousands of nodes on-premise in the cloud and simplifies your big data processing for your business. So we integrate it in the Hadoop ecosystem, we embrace it, improve performance, provide all our functionality, and integrate it into enterprise system. So with that, we want to thank you for your, very much for your attention. I'm very excited to be here with all this big audience in this big room. So thanks very much for listening to us and uh, listening to the results of SAP HANA Voro. And I'm happy, and Oscar as well, to answer any question you have here or later uh, at a coffee. Thanks a lot. <laughs>